can Yahushua be divided? How? When we should have his mind. How can our Heavenly Father Yahuwah be divided? He is not the author of confusion. Strife and contention is not in the midst of him. So if we have his mind, how can that be so? My brothers and sisters. Is the Mashiach divided? Was Shaul crucified for you? Or were you, or were you baptized in the name of Shaul? During that time, people were boasting in the different denominations. It was contention. Verse 14, he says, I thank the Almighty that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. So it seems that Shaul was led to operate in wisdom even concerning baptism. Because he did not want to be lifted up in the flesh. As people were doing so. Not just to him, but to even the other apostles. Verse 16. He says, and I baptized also the household of Stephan. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For the Messiah sent me not to baptize, but to preach the Bashura, the good news, not with wisdom of words, lest the, they have crossed, we know he was crucified upon the tree, lest the stake of the Messiah should be made of not effect. Brothers and sisters, what we are experiencing now and what we are going through now, the contention. Not justifying those who want to teach false doctrine or subvert. And those people who are wolves and sheep clothing that want to do wicked things to the assembly. You, we are to stand up against that. We are to contend for the faith. The scripture talks about that. But we're talking about things that love us to the truth. And there's certain things that Yahuwah is going to reveal to all of us. About the things that we are doing that are causing the continual effect. And Yahuwah is expecting us all to be reconciled. And that's going to happen in his time through his son. First of all, this should, first of all we as his children should not even have any negative thoughts towards one another. We shouldn't. We need to leave it at the foot of Yahushua and his father Yahuwah and keep moving on. But listen here, my brothers and sisters. Verse 18. For the preaching of the, of the tree, as far of the stake, for the preaching of the tree is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Almighty. That's powerful. See, when, you have, when we all have his mind, we can relate to the things of Yahushua and our Father Yahuwah. We can relate to the suffering because we know him and his Father. But for people who don't have his mind, how can they know him? To know means to consider with the mind. Verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom. This is, listen. Listen now to our father. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. When you approach the word of Yahuwah, you are not to approach it in your own wisdom. In order to understand our father and our Messiah, you must ask for his mind regarding the matter. This is the mistake that the scholars have done. Operating in their heart and heart. Translating his word, taking his name out. How can they, how can they, thank you my father, my king. How can they know him? They took his name out and his son's name out. How can they have the mind of him? How can they be inspired? Mm. Listen. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is this disputer of this world? 
Have not the Almighty made foolish the wisdom of this world? Look around you. To them, in that reprobate state, we all been there, didn't we? So let's not play games. But during that time, but even now, look at, look at the way they think. They have one mind. This is a battle of the mind. The mind of Yahuwah against the mind of the enemy. This is why there is such an enmity. There's a separation because the mind is different. Verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of the Almighty, the world by wisdom knew not the Almighty. It pleased the Almighty by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Do you see this? That's powerful. Even though the world in their wisdom, even though they had wisdom, they had understanding to a certain degree and knowledge to a certain degree. Yet, they could not know him. That's something. Yet our Father allowed by his own power to teach and preach. He would send those to teach his mind, his way of thinking to his children. Hmm. Some people will say, well, why won't the Father just speak from heaven? Of course, if he did that, many of us would be in fear. We would be impulsive to obey him. That's why people look at it as foolish. They look at preaching as foolishness. Why don't, even I said this in my reprobate mind. Thank you, my father, my king. I remember it was times in my days I was saying, why don't God, I didn't know his name during that time, allow, I, I thank you, Father Yahuwah, so much. I say it publicly, Father Yahuwah, in my master Yahshua. I thank you both before the world. I thank you for giving me a new mind. But in my arrogant state, when I was saying, why don't God come down here himself and speak to me? That's, that's what the scriptures is pertaining to. The world looks at it as they look at preaching. They look at, they look at, at, at the men of Yahuwah coming as the prophets, as the, the servants of Yahuwah, the ministry of Yahushua to preach and teach. They look at it as being foolish. But our father set it up that way. Listen. Verse 22, for the Yahoos, the Yahudiah, require the sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Do you see this? Though the Yahudiah, the Hebrews, many who did not receive Yahushua, they wanted a sign. And then you had many of the Greeks who, who did not love the truth. When they was approached with the truth, they wanted, they wanted to, according to the scripture, they were seeking after wisdom. But, but what type of wisdom? Hmm. Verse 23. But we preach the Messiah crucified unto the Yahoos, the Yahudia, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. This is how they interpret it. The ones who did not receive Yahushua, the Yahudia, the Hebrews, it, it, was, it was a stumbling block. They were offended at that. And you had the Greeks who, who did not receive it. They regarded it as being foolishness. Because they had their own mighty ones that they prayed to. Even today, in this modern time, they depict their gods as gods of wealth and riches. Yahushua, even though our father owns all things, they, people sneer and look at the Messiah as a man of, a man of sorrows. Why would I want to follow that? A man who would who would allow someone to beat on them? That sounds, that, that's weak. Why would I want to follow? They look at it as foolishness. Do you see this? But it is power. His sufferings. What he went through. What his father went through. The father's sufferings. It is power. Because it encourages us in our sufferings to endure as they are doing. You don't think our father and our king are still enduring? As they watch this wicked planet. Hmm. Listen. Verse 25. It says because the foolishness of the almighty. Is wiser than men. And the weakness of the almighty. Is stronger than men. Now we need to stop here. This is a revelation. Let's not look at this with carnal eyes. 
but with the mind of Yahuwah and Yahushua. Let's look at it through their perspective. Let's look at it through their eyes. It says, because the foolishness of the Almighty. Now, we know our father is not a fool. He is very wise. He is knowledge itself. It says, for the, listen, because the foolishness of the Almighty is wiser than men. And the weakness, now wait a minute, we know our father is not weak. He is all Shaddai Yahi, the Almighty One. But it says here, and the weakness of the Almighty is stronger than men. This is the perception of the mindset of the world that views our father as being weak, even now. They're challenging him. They think he's weak. But wait until he sent his sons back. When he sent his sons back. Not only his only begotten son, but when he allows the sons of Yahuwah to be seen. The world is going to regret challenging our father Yahuwah. But it's going to be too late by then. Listen. Verse 26. It says, for you are, it's, excuse me. Thank you, my father. I came for that correction. Listen. For you see your calling, brothers. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's powerful. You, it's amazing because even back in the ancient of days, they had what you call today celebrities, heroes. Oh, man, this, is, this is a powerful revelation. There's nothing new under the sun. People say the Bible days. We still living in the scriptures. Look, look around you. Don't we have celebrities? Even back in the ancient days, many of the so-called people who were of men of renown, celebrities, many of them sneered at the truth. They couldn't receive it. It was considered foolishness to them, just as it is now. <laughs> they, they, oh, this, they fulfill the scriptures. Thinking themselves to be wise, they have become fools. Mm. Listen, verse 27, but the Almighty has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And the Almighty has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. What the revelation is, is that our Father chooses the least of us. Because see, in the eyes of celebrities, we are considered Fans, peons, subjects, slaves. But Yahuwah looks past the stardom, as they say. When he revealed, you know what I found that I keep revealed to me? When they call themselves all star, they are saying that they are all. They are saying they are all Allah. I found that I keep revealed this to me. Star being in, in the north, in, in the upper, the highest point, all star. They are considering themselves, they, well, they, are de they are declaring to you that they are all, they are strength. But we know what? That Yahuwah is our all. He is our strength. He is our Allah, Yah, him and his son. So we're not moved by that. In Yahushua's name, we're not moved by that. But he chooses the weak things because in the eyes of the popular, the apostles were considered weak men, unlearned men, poor men, men of low esteem. They were not valued in the higher community. Just like many of us now are not. Verse 28. It says, and base things of the world and things which are despised have the Almighty chosen. Yes. And things which are not to bring to nothing, things that are. I love our Father for that. Yahushua fulfills all this. And so do us because we have his mind. Yahushua was a man that was what? Despised. He was a man of sorrow. But yet he had joy in his heart. He was acquainted with our griefs. He suffered. 
yet he see was filled with the love of Yahuwah. That's powerful. Can you see the revelation? We are to have the mind of Yahushua. The mind of his father, Yahuwah. To be like them. In every fiber of our being. In every attribute. We are to possess. Possess all of him. That's what the Ruach Hagandash is. It is his mind. Imparted to us. It is his ways. It is his nature. To reflect him and his son. Listen. I love. I, I mean. I just want to tell you all. I love you. I love all. I'm just so happy. Even though I'm going through trials and tribulations. You know I was going through trials and tribulations today. As the devil was trying to come against me. And you know our father gave me a song. And I was just singing. <laughs> and them demons that were around me. They were just looking. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness, where? In the high places. And, and, and Yahuwah just gave me just, just melody in my heart. I was just singing. And them demons were angry. Wow, I was filled with joy. You know that? And I know a lot of you experiencing the same thing, too. I thank our Father and our, and our King. I really do. Listen. <laughs> I love it. Listen. It says here, Verse 29, it says that no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, you can't boast before him. We are to boast in who? Yahuwah. Not ourselves. V verse 30, but of him are you in the Messiah, Yahushua, who of the Almighty is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. It says sanctification, meaning being set apart and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorified or that esteems, let him glorify in Yahuwah. In other words, let him boast in Yahuwah, not yourself, my brothers and sisters. That's powerful. Please turn me to the book of uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. Listen, my brothers and sisters. As the apostle is speaking through inspiration. He says, If there be, therefore, any consolation in the Messiah, if any comfort or love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, of the Ra'uah, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. That's powerful. He was encouraging them, all of them, to operate in the mind of Yahushua, which is the mind of his heavenly father. That's powerful. See, they were one. This is why he wept with tears, because when, the, when those devils came in unaware, but it was prophesied to happen. And when the assembly was split. And false teachings were being taught. This is why he wept. But our father through his son allowed it to be so. To fulfill all things was going to be. Look, look what's around us now. It had to be so. Listen. Verse 3. Let nothing be done. Through strife or vainglory, esteeming yourself, listen, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now the question is, can we fulfill this? Because Yahushua, he said what? L learn of him. He is lowly in heart. Come to, come to me all. Come to him, thank you my father, my king, come to him all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he will, what? He will give you strength. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him. For he is meek and lowly at heart. Thank you, Father. Learn of him. This is what Shaul was bringing to them. The mind of Yahushua. Listen. 
Wait a minute, hold on. Thank you, my father, my king. Let's read this. Look at verse 3 again, my brothers and sisters. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. How many of us are doing it? But I'm here to encourage you. By the encouragement of our father, Yahuwah, through his son, Yahushua, that when we have his mind, it is possible. Because Yahushua, he esteemed his father. He said, my father is greater than I, didn't he? You all know of these things, don't you? So I'm not speaking these things to, to offend you. But to remind you of his mind. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's something. These men, they watched each other. They, they encouraged each other. They communicated with one another. They sent epistles and letters to each other. Hmm. They went through their challenges. But this is the things that were required of the apostles. Listen. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in the Messiah, Yahushua. Oh, you know, I, many of us, we can all agree. We, we heard this in church so many times, didn't we? But to come to the full magnitude and the revelation of it by our father through his son and to have their mind. Do you understand what Shaul was actually saying? Let this mind, what mind? Whose mind? What is Shahu talking about? This is a rhetorical question to your inner man as well as mine. But we know what it is. Look closely, my brothers and sisters. He says, let this mind. He didn't, he didn't say minds, plural. He said mind. Speaking of unity. He says, let this mind be in you. Which was also in the Messiah, Yahushua. Of course it says Jesus Christ. But that's another mind. When the scholars added it in. They were operating under another mind. But we who have his mind. We know his name is Yahushua. Don't we? We are to have his mind and to operate in it, my brothers and sisters. Listen, verse 6. Who, being in the form. Now, 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 this is revelation. Listen, brothers and sisters. This is what the mind of Yahushua is to produce in your very lives. Listen. Who, being in the form of the Almighty, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Almighty. Now, wait a minute. Does this mean that we are Alayam? No. But we are made in his image. We are his children. We are set apart. We should walk with a high expectation and a high esteem. Not pride, but we should be proud to be known as his elect. But listen, verse 7, but, so don't get cocky, don't get beside yourself. Listen, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in a likeness of men. In other words, Yahushua, even though he knew he was special. And he knew that the Father was with him. What it means by made no reputation, it doesn't mean he didn't declare who he was. So I'm not speaking saying that you can't declare that you are a child of the king. But what it meant was among men to the masses of people. He did not flaunt himself. He wasn't walking around saying, I'm the machine. Those things were revealed, led by his father when the time came. He was a, this is a minister. He was a servant. We are to be, this is to operate, we are to operate in this mind. V verse 8, look, my brothers and sisters. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Even the death of the tree, of the stake. 
He humbled himself. He that exalted himself will be abased. But he that humbled himself should be exalted. Where is Yahushua? At the right hand of our father, you. He was obedient. Listen. Verse 9. Wherefore the Almighty also have highly exalted him. Do you see this? And gave and given him a name which is above every name. What name is that? Yahuwah. That's powerful. Do you realize our Heavenly Father will give us not only his mind, but his very name? When the name Yahuwah is given to you, what a gift. Better than any last name or first name, my brothers and sisters. But when you carry the name Yahoo inside of you, it is high expectations. Listen. Verse 10. That at the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahushua, the Messiah, is master to the glory or the esteem of the Almighty, the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is good, that's powerful, isn't it? For it is good which worketh, excuse me, thank you, my father. For it is the Almighty, which he is good. For it is the Almighty which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's powerful. That is powerful. When you have his mind, my brothers and sisters, how can, you, how can you displease the Father and his Son when they have given you their very mind? Mm. I love you all very much. I wish all of you blessings, revelation, and growth in the name of Yahushua and Yahuwah. And when that time comes, he's going to bring us together. I love you all in the name of Yahushua and Yahuwah.